Good morning and welcome to the Taxes Committee on March 19th, 2024. Quorum is present. Uh, first item on the agenda is adoption of the minutes. Are there any revisions or amendments to the minutes as presented in the packet? Seeing none, the minutes are adopted. Members, today is uh, going to be a theme of construction material tax exemptions. Uh, Council has provided us with a spreadsheet uh, breaking down the cost and purpose of each one of these items. I just want to point out for the committee that these are in numeric order, not in agenda order. Um, and also just to say that because of sort of the busy time of year and authors are moving from committee to committee, we may bounce around on the agenda depending on author availability. But I do see Senator Westland is present in the chamber, so Senator Westland. Good morning and welcome to the committee, Senator Westland. Senate file 3415 is in front of us and I see you have an author's amendment, the A1. Senator Dibble offers the A1 amendment to Senate file 3415. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Amendment is adopted. Senator Westland. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Good morning. Um, this bill before you today uh, would exempt materials, supplies, and equipment used in the construction of several projects in the city of Plymouth as enumerated in the bill. Uh, the exemption would be administered as a refund and apply to purchases after December 31st, 2023 and before January 1st of 2029. Uh, the projects include a construction of a parking ramp, renovation of Plymouth Boulevard, expansion of Plymouth Ice Center, construction of regional stormwater ponding, roadway alignment, expansion of the Plymouth Community Center, renovation of Zachary water treatment, renovation of Meadow Playfield. It is important to um, take uh, notice of the fact that, that Plymouth is actually a regional center um, and uh, this particular uh, bill and the exemption for materials will be important to um, the city in terms of being able to provide uh, uh, better services and some updates that are needed for our city. And I do have one testifier. Thank you, Senator Westland. Mr. Callister, please introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. My name is Dave Callister. I'm the city manager in the city of Plymouth. And I appreciate the opportunity to testify today in support of Senate File 3415. Uh, Senate file 3415 would authorize a state sales tax exemption for all materials, supplies, and equipment purchased for several important projects in our community. Plymouth is the seventh largest city in Minnesota with a population of 82,000 people. We have experienced significant growth over the past decade, uh, over 11,000 new residents in that time. In order to keep pace with the needs of the, and the growth in the community, we have plans to provide additional recreational and business and residential development opportunities, primarily in the Plymouth City Center area, which is our main commercial area or downtown area. Um, as outlined in the handout, uh, the projects include, um, actually six of the projects are in that city center area. And what we're trying to do in the city center area is to, we've never allowed residential uses, so we're going to encourage higher density, affordable housing. There'll be a transit component in there, and we're trying to, uh, bring this area to life. It's probably 30 some years old and we're trying to um, take advantage of opportunities to uh, create more housing and more energy and more activity, economic activity in that area. Um, we are requesting support uh, for Senate file 3415 that would allow us to seek reimbursement of our state sales taxes paid for the purchase of materials, supplies and equipment. This would allow us to uh, lower project costs and reduce the impact on local taxpayers. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have with regards to the request. Thank you, Mr. Callister. Remember questions or comments or amendments. Senator Weber. Just a quick question, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I, have, I don't remember having seen us deal with uh, forgiveness of rates that take us into the next biennium. And I was just wondering if that has been done before. Thanks, Senator Weber. Uh, Ms. Pollack, can you address the question? Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, Senator Weber, um, I'm not sure of the exact cir circumstances, but um, 
I know that last year we uh, enacted a number of similar um, um, uh, local government by local government, project by project exemptions that had, um, due to the length of the construction time, had some costs going into a future biennium. Um, I can pull up the spreadsheet from last okay. year to, uh, to find the specifics that's, on that. That's fine, thank you. Senator so, Weber? No. Other questions or comments from the committee? Senator Westland, with that, uh, Senate file 3415, as amended, is laid over. Senator Mann. Mr. Chair, members. Senator Mann, uh, Senate file 4614 is in front of us. Yes, uh, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to give it to my testifier. Mr. Neal, please introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the, of the committee. My name is Scott Neal, and I'm the city manager in Edina. Uh, the bill before you today is, is, is 46, uh, Senate file 4614 uh, seeks, your, uh, seeks your approval to exempt uh, from state sales tax, the eligible uh, materials and equipment for four uh, large park projects in, in my community. These projects have, have uh, been previously presented to our, uh, to our public and to our council for referendum approval, and they were back in 2022 and 2023. Uh, what we're seeking uh, today is exemption from sales tax uh, of, of projects related to the expansion of Braemar Arena, uh, a Braemar area or Braemar Arena remodeling project on the interior, kind of back of house uh, building infrastructure, and Braemar Park, which is that area around Braemar Arena with baseball, golf, and, and things like that, and Fred Richards Park, which is a closed um, nine hole golf course that closed 10 years ago, and then we were preparing to make that into more of a, a nature park. Uh, this makes a big difference to our, our project costs. Uh, one of the things that happens in a sales tax funded project just like these are that you have to size and scope the project maybe five years before you can even start uh, the project. So it, it is subject to uh, construction inflation. That's what's happened to us. So we would appreciate uh, your approval of this request to add these dollars back into our projects. Thank you, Mr. Neal. Member questions, comments, or amendments for the Administrator of Edina? Senator Mann, uh, Senate File 4614 is laid over. Thank you. Senator Coleman. Welcome to the committee, Senator Coleman. Senate file 3385 is in front of us, and I see you have the A2 author's amendment. Senator uh, Weber offers the A2 author's amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Amendment is adopted. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, for the sake of efficiency, this is a sales tax exemption bill for the Chanhassen Bluff Sports Complex, and this is my testifier. Thank you, Senator Coleman. Ms. Ryan, please introduce yourself. Mayor Ryan, please introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair, committee members. My name is Elise Ryan, and I am the mayor of Chan Hassan. I want to thank you, Mr. Chair, committee members, for hearing Senate File 3385 today. We also want to thank Senator Coleman for having been a consistent, strong champion for our community. Senate File 3385 provides a sales tax exemption for construction materials for the city of Chanhassen for our upcoming recreational facility construction project. Mr. Chair, members, as I stated, this file provides a sales tax exemption for the city of Chanhassen. Specifically, the bill provides an exemption for the construction of new recreational facility known as the Chanhassen Sports Complex. The facility will help fulfill Chanhassen's mission to be a community for life offering amenities for ages, all ages and abilities. The new year-round indoor walking track has been a long uh, requested by most, the most, um, excuse me, has long been the most requested amenity in our extensive community outreach efforts. Chanhassen's population has doubled since 1990. 
We are a regional destination as evidenced by the fact that 71% of participants in local youth associations rely on Chanhassen facilities are non-residents. Mr. Chair, committee members, uh, Senate file 3385 would reduce the total project cost for our planned facility improvements, and we greatly appreciate your consideration. Thank you for your time today, and we are available to answer any questions. Thank you, Mayor. Member questions, comments, or amendments? Senator Coleman, Senate file 3385 as amended is laid over. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Farnsworth. Welcome to the committee center, Farns, where Senate file 4806 is in front of us. Thank you, Mr. Chair uh, and members for consideration of uh, Senate file 4806. This bill would provide a rebate to Itasca County for the sales tax paid on construction materials for the county's remodeling of the courthouse facilities. Uh, with me today to testify in support of this is Itasca County Administrator Brett Skiles. Mr. Skiles, please introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Brett Skiles. I'm the county administrator up in Itasca County. Uh, the first, I'd like to thank this committee. You did support this bill last year, so we're giving it another go today. Um, and uh, just as a brief reminder, uh, what we're looking for is a sales tax rebate on our project. Uh, we're built uh, a new courthouse, basically, for our Justice Center and our Government Center, um, and remodeled some courtrooms and remodeled uh, some court administration as well as building a new county attorney's office. Uh, the new facility really focuses on supports that we need to address in our old building, improve safety for victims via court proceedings, uh, really some safe rooms for court viewing and improve foot traffic flow. Uh, we're very proud to receive some um, funds from the Karen Struford Peace and Safety Foundation. Um, just as a reminder, Karen Struford was a terrible murder that happened up in Itasca County back in the 90s, and that family wanted to have um, some memorial for her, so we built a safe room. They did, came to us since we built a safe room in, in the courthouse for uh, victims assistance and safety, full ADA compliance for inclusion for all in the judicial process, and greatly improved court and personnel uh, judge and safety through secure access, inmate movement, and bailiff response. So we thank you for your consideration of this request. Oh, thank you, Mr. Skiles. Members, questions, comments, uh, or amendments on Senate File 4806? Senator Farnsworth, uh, Senate File 4806 is laid over. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Utke. Welcome to the committee, Senator Utke. Senate file 4836 is in front of the committee, and I believe you have an A1 amendment which should be distributed and a handout. Yep. Th one, thank you. Thank one you, moment, Chair. Senator Upke, while the amendment is distributed. Is there no amendment? Uh, change in program committee members, apologies, Senator Utke. If I could just have you take a seat on the chairs there for a bit, we're going to get your amendment printed and distributed, but we don't have it immediately available. So we will do another bill and then get right back to you once that's available. Mr. Do you have a copy machine? I could give you this. Um, Mr. Bergeron will come get that from you. You still want us to? If you could, thank you so much. Pardon me? If you could, yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Senator Barr. It's a big, big agenda. 
Welcome to the committee, Senator Barra. Senate file 4795 is in front of the committee and I see you have an A1 author's amendment. Senator Nelson offers uh, the A1. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Amendment is adopted. Senator Barr. So the uh, 4795 is a uh, uh, just to add, we don't change any, we had a sales tax exemption the committee gave us last year. This doesn't change any of the dollars or the time period on the exemption. We just uh, add this uh, sentence in here about the truck main water line so that we can connect the new water uh, treatment facility to the existing water mains and that's just adding on uh, what the sales tax exemption can be used for. And Mr. Hagan, welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Brian Hagan, the city administrator for Ramsey. Um, as Senator Barr indicated, it's, a, it's really a, a carryover from last year. We're adding a, a, a few words to the bill that was approved last year. All the, the financials that we provided last year included both a trunk water main improvement project and a water treatment plant construction project. Um, so from that standpoint, all, all the numbers are, are good. The project itself is underway as far as the trunk or the water treatment plant is concerned. It, it will be completed next summer and uh, turned on and providing the safe drinking water to our community late next summer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Senator Barr, I see that the revenue estimate shows a zero dollar impact. So congratulations on that. The lowest of the day. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <laughs> other member questions, comments or amendments on the 4795? Senator, uh, Senator Nelson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I just have a, a question. I'm sure that uh, others have perhaps checked this out, but uh, clarifying the scope, so adding the words that the um, project includes trunk water main improvements, is that the clarification uh, that the um, local sales tax now includes trunk water main improvements? Senator Barr. Mr. Chair, Senator Nelson, correct. Um, it was a technical oversight last year that we didn't use uh, the sales tax exemption for the water main. So this is just an addition to that. The exemption for that project is to clarifying yes. Oh, Senator it, uh, Nelson. Uh, thank you so much. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Other questions? Senator Barr, Senate file 4795 as amended is laid over. Thank you. Senator Anderson. Welcome to the committee, Senator Anderson. Senate file 3582 is in front of the committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members of the committee. I appreciate the opportunity to present uh, Senate file 3582. Uh, exempting the uh, sales and use tax on a project that is being uh, done in uh, Delano, Minnesota, and I have with me the city engineer, Sean Luigi. Welcome to the committee, Mr. Luigi. Please introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. My name is Sean Luigi, and I serve as the city engineer public works director for the city of Delano. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony for Senate file 3582. As you may know, Delano is located just west of the Minneapolis-St. Paul metro area in Wright County. It is a growing community of approximately 7,000 people and is known for its 4th of July celebration and strong school system. In 1989, the Delano Area Sports Arena building was constructed which houses a chilled full-size hockey rink within the Delano School campus. Delano is now embarking on a project to construct an additional full-size hockey rink with a chiller system an open walled roof system over the chilled hockey rink, an open skating loop, and a geothermal cooling well. Also a building addition to the sports arena currently um, for community use. Uh, one of the primary uses of, this, of these improvements will be for winter activities. The facilities also plan to be available for use to other civic organizations and athletic groups throughout the year. The cost for construction materials is estimated to be 4.5 million. While projects can be bid in a manner to take advantage of the city's tax exempt status, various aspects of the project utilize a design build approach. The creation of separate contracts for labor and materials would not be feasible for this project due to that reason, which is why we are requesting tax exemption for the construction materials and equipment. 
Lastly, I would like to again thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, and Senator Anderson for the opportunity to speak to you today. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Luwaji. Members, questions, comments, or amendments to 3582. Senator Anderson, 3582 is laid over. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, committee members. Have a good day. Senator Upke. Senator Upke, thank you for your flexibility. Senate File 4836 is once again in front of the committee, and we do now have the A1 amendment distributed. Uh, Senator Weber offers the A1. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, amendment is adopted. Um, Senator Utke. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, we have got before you today a request for the sales tax exemption for the Browerville High School. A year ago, almost a year ago, on April 1st, um, it was the ultimate April Fools, but it wasn't because the gymnasium roof collapsed from the snow load. And from there it led to a uh, much bigger project. But the school is involved in now rebuilding their school. And with that, um, you know, starting from the natural disaster to upgrading codes, etc., cetera, um, we have the amount that's before us. And, um, Mr. Chair, if I could, I'd like to introduce Browerville, Browerville Superintendent Scott Vedbrotten, who will go a little more in depth on this project. Senator Key, you certainly can. Superintendent, please introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, members of this committee, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Scott Fedbrotten. I am the superintendent of Browerville Public Schools. Thank you, Senator Utke, for the opportunity today. Um, as Senator Utke um, alluded to, um, the greatest uh, April Fool's joke of all time um, was not when my track coach called me on April 1st when he walked into my gymnasium on that Saturday afternoon and told me that um, my gym had partially collapsed and um, we instantly went into a panic mode because um, that gymnasium was in the process of coming down. And 22 hours later, um, we brought the rest of that gymnasium down after disconnecting all the crucial um, elements such as water mains, um, glyc glycol pipes, and everything so that when it did collapse, it did not affect the rest of the building. And um, to do that in 24 hours, it was quite the undertaking. And the only thing that we were given by insurance companies was to preserve and protect the rest of the building. And what does that mean? Good luck. That's what it was. So anyways, we are at where we are right now, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a background. My district did pass a referendum this past fall, which was quite an undertaking in itself because six years ago, my school district inherited the only school district to dissolve in the past 40 years. And to do that, you need to understand that districts that are uh, joining each other are usually arch rivals. And it was no different. So to, to come together to pass a referendum on a 60-40 vote was quite the undertaking. And not only that, but we had to do it in one of the two poorest school districts in the state of Minnesota. And when I say two poorest, Todd and Wadena County swap between the poorest school district in the state of Minnesota. And the constituents of my district did this knowing that they put themselves in financial constraints because they can't necessarily afford what they did. And being in front of you is the first opportunity for the state to step in and assist my school district. And by, by aiding in uh, uh, the forgiveness of the tax um, on everything that's listed in the document that you have before you would be a great undertaking and uh, a great savings to the taxpayers of my district. So I thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of you today. Um, I welcome any questions that you have. And, uh, and I thank you again, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Well, thank you, Superintendent. Thank you for traveling to St. Paul today to share your story. Members, questions, comments, or amendments for 4836? Senator Dibble. 
we, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We went to visit the school on the bonding tour. It's uh, pretty shocking and pretty bracing to see the disaster there. So thank you for coming down and sharing the story. Thank you for your opportunity and thank you for coming that day too. Senator Utke, Senate file 4836 is amended, is laid over. Senator thank you, McQuaid. Mr. Chair and members. Senator McQuaid. Welcome to the committee, Senator May Quaid. Senate file 3498 is in front of us. You have an A3 offers amendment. Uh, Senator Dibble offers the A3. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? A3 is adopted. Senator May Quaid. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, thanks for agreeing to hear Senate file 3498. This bill would grant a sales tax exemption um, to the City of Apple Valley for the purchase of construction materials to upgrade essential public service facilities. This project is a multi-phase renovation of the Apple Valley Central Maintenance Facility, which is home to several important departments that serve my constituents, including public works, park maintenance, fleet maintenance, and natural resources. The facility includes seven buildings on a 20-acre site, and some of these buildings are 40 years old and need significant renovation. They are older than me. The renovation of the central maintenance facility is funded solely by the taxpayers of Apple Valley. The state is not asking for state bonding chairs. My mayor pro tem thinks I'm very funny. <laughs> um, just for help in the form of the sales tax exemption for construction materials. So I urge you to vote yes, and thank you for your consideration of this important bill. Councilman Goodwin, please introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Chair Klein and the Tax Committee members, Senate Tax Committee members, my name is Tom Godwin. I am, have the privilege of being a council member for over 40 years in the city of Apple Valley. That's probably before you were born. And I've also the privilege of being 24 years as the mayor pro tem for the city of Apple Valley. Or as our ex-mayor used to call it, mayor pretend. As you may know, Apple Valley is a community of 56,000 people located in the South Metro area in the proud home of the Minnesota Zoo, which I all hope you come and visit a couple times a year. I am here to speak in favor of Senate File 3498, a bill authored by our own State Senator Aaron McQuaid. I thank Senator, I thank Senator McQuaid for a strong support of this bill and ask that you all do the same. This bill would grant a sales tax exemption for construction materials to use on an upcoming construction project in Apple Valley. The project is a multi-phase renovation of our existing central maintenance facility, which is home to various departments, including public works, parks maintenance, fleet maintenance, and natural resources. As you can see from the picture below, the central maintenance facilities comprise of seven buildings on a 20-acre site. Some of these buildings are 40 years old and need significant renovation. The city did not ask for state bonding dollars to assist with the project. The project will be funded solely by the taxpayers of Apple Valley. Where we need your help is the state takes state sales tax exemption for the project's construction cost. In today's inflationary environment, construction costs continue to climb. Construction materials alone for this project are estimated at approximately 13.3 million. Your support will help leverage our local tax dollars and will help us upgrade these essential public service mess facilities for generations to come. I urge your support for Center File 3498 and thank you for your consideration um, for this important bill. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Members, questions, comments, or amendments? Senator Dibble. As an Apple Valley graduate, I have to say, this is a good bill. You should vote for it. So <laughs> nice to see you, Council Member Goodwin. I was, I was in Apple Valley. I lived in Apple Valley. Oh, I know. Council Member. Yeah. Barbara Savannah was a good friend of our families. So good to see you. What year did you graduate? 83. 83. 83. I've been a Council, council. Member since 84. Oh, okay. Senator so I skipped out as soon as you uh, got elected. <laughs> <laughs> but did you have a son who went to Apple Valley? High yeah, school. my Some my counts. younger boy, Jeff Goodwin, graduated in '84. My older boy yeah. graduated. Greg Goodwin graduated in uh, well six years earlier now, '78. Right, right. So, Senator. Yeah. I remember. Say hello to them for me. And the All school's right. still doing great. I am totally lost. <laughs> lost. District 196. <laughs> 
Members. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Senate file 3498 is as, am is it as amended is laid over. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Eichhorn. Welcome to the committee, Senator Eichhorn. Senate file 3326 is in front of us. You have an A4 author's amendment. Senator Draskowski offers the A4 author's amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Chair, I wonder if Senator Draskowski could uh, fill in the amendment. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All opposed? The A4 is adopted. Senator Eichhorn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I know you've heard a few of these today, so I'll be super quick. It's just a sales tax exemption for the, a project that was done in the city of Grand Rapids, and I've got City Council Member Blake here to talk to you a little bit about the project and the importance of it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Blake, Chair. please uh, introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Rick Blake. I'm a city councilor in Grand Rapids. Um, Senate file 3326 provides a sales tax exemption for the um, remodeling and reconstruction of the IRA Civic Center. The original budget was just, just, just before COVID was 11 million. The final project cost was 15.5 million. The funding ended up state bond money was 5 million, local option sales tax was 5.6 million, and the city, city funds were 4.6 million. It's truly a regional facility that has a positive economic impact, estimated at 3.5 million annually. Without this facility, especially this winter, the loss of tourism dollars due to no snow and ice fishing would have been cat catastrophic. 60% of the us users of this uh, facility are non-residents. We're looking for additional assistance from the state with the sales tax rebate on the material cost of the project. If passed, this would reduce the debt we have to issue and provide lower ice rental rates. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Senator Eichhorn or his witness? Senator Eichhorn, any final comment? Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to hear this and all these, these bills today. It's uh, for cities like Grand Rapids and, and small communities, you know, these little, the, which may seem small to this committee in terms of dollars, really make a huge difference for the residents of our, our, our small communities like Grand Rapids. So thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Um, there being no further discussion, uh, Senate file, where is it? 3326 is laid over. Thank, thank you very you. much today. As amended. So, have we done for its work? What, what hasn't been done? Oh. <laughs> Nora needs to make a correction to a statement early that there was an ask for Senator Weber, so this will be the time to do that. Okay. Uh, is Senator Matthews here? <laughs> Senator Matthews. <clears throat> Senator Matthews, Matthews brings us Senate File 4840. Welcome to the committee, Senator Matthews. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have Senate File 4840, uh, a sales tax exemption for the Big Lake School District, a project that they already have underway right now. Uh, and to talk about it, uh, we have uh, our school superintendent, Tim Truenbach, to speak to the bill. Uh, welcome to the committee, um, uh, Superintendent. Uh, Truenbach, is that correct? That's right. Okay. And we're pleased to have your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair. I am uh, members of the committee. I am Tim Trubenbach, Superintendent of Schools at Big Lake. Um, so just to give a little background, um, uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak briefly on this. A little background on Big Lake Schools. We are uh, Independent School District 727. Uh, we have uh, approximately 206 square miles and is a home to approximately 3,200 students. Um, the district is located approximately 42 miles northwest of the metro area. Uh, on November uh, 2nd of 2021, Big Lake Schools community passed a $30 million bond referendum to restore and renew our school district's uh, facilities. 
Uh, the following projects were determined to be at the highest need. Uh, we're replacing approximately 185,000 square feet of failing roofing materials, replacement of a ventilation system at one of our elementary schools, uh, installation of dehumidification systems at our high school, uh, parking lot modifications to address some parent backup issues, uh, replacement of building heating, ventilation, air conditioning controls um, that were obsolete, uh, renovations to each building's media center to better serve our students, uh, renovations and updates to areas that serve our special education departments, um, as well as updates and enhancements to the career technical education spaces. Now, due to the unprecedented uh, inflation, <clears throat> we have experienced some of the project scopes have had to be reduced. Um, uh, but in order to maintain uh, the spirit of the referendum, we did uh, uh, complete the bulk or are able to afford the bulk. But some of the reductions that did take place due to this uh, uh, inflation is uh, some roofing system replacements. So approximately 10% of our uh, roofing uh, was reduced. We limited the upgrades and the enhancements, in particular uh, in our CTE spaces, uh, uh, having to do with in our equipment replacements. Um, and then we also, some of our replacements for our windows at uh, one of our elementary school, as as well as uh, some wall and floor coverings we had to reduce out, out uh, because of some of the inflationary cost. Now the passing of this one-time uh, uh, sales tax exempt uh, would be used for the materials uh, for the construction and renovation uh, in the areas of enhancing the equipment uh, and opportunities in our career and technical education spaces, as well as uh, replacing additional building materials such as the windows, doors, and flooring. And once again, I thank you for your time uh, for listening. Uh, and in total, uh, just so you know, from our perspective so far through December 2024, uh, we will have completed approximately $23 million uh, worth of projects, which includes $11.4 million of material cost, sales tax being $842,000. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, um, Superintendent. Are there uh, questions or comments for uh, Superintendent Truenbach. Senator Nelson. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, of those projects that you mentioned, are those, I, I might have missed part of that first explanation, are those uh, projects like career tech ed, those type of things, uh, things that would not be able to be completed? Uh, if, we were, in fact, we do not do the exemption? We were, uh, we were able to complete, essentially, Sir, you, the infrastructure you spaces. To, um, you need to address the chair first. Sorry, so. sorry. Sorry, Madam Chair. I apologize. Madam Chair. Um, I uh, thank you for the question. Uh, essentially, the infrastructure was essentially uh, completed, uh, but it's the equipment that's there. We did complete a lot of ADA projects and things like that, making things accessible. But the equipment, a lot of times we refer to it as F, F, and E, uh, furniture, fixtures, and, and equipment. And some of that had to be reduced, so we would purchase the equipment that would go inside those spaces. Senator Nelson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So I'm, I'm glad you explained that. So because of the increased cost in the construction materials, you had to pare back on the furnishings. Um, and by uh, um, having this uh, exemption from that sales tax, you'd be able to now afford those furnishings that you had planned in the first place. Is that correct? Madam, Superintendent. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, that is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments for Senator Matthews? Or the superintendent? Seeing none, um, Senate file uh, 4840 um, will be laid over. Thank you very much, Senator Matthews and superintendent. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chair. The uh, last bill on our agenda um, is Senate file 3548, um, Senator Mitchell. <clears throat> Welcome to the committee, Senator Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee. Um, I'm here to present Senate File 3548, which would be a um, bill to exempt materials and supplies used in relation to the building of a water tower in our community. Um, Senator Mitchell, I believe you have um, an A1 amendment. Oh, yes, ma'am. So let's get that on the, on the bill as, um, so that you can discuss it as, what? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're, we don't. Okay. I was looking at the, at the, uh, the bill below that. You do not. 
So I you can just continue. I was surprised, Sorry. but maybe you no, had something okay. I didn't have. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is a, in relation to the co construction of a water tower in our community that is uh, related to us also building a new water treatment facility in our community all related to the PFAS problem in the East Metro. So um, that will help store some of the extra supply as that construction is being done. Um, we happen to also have a, a partial bonding request in for that project itself, but um, Woodbury has been one of the communities very, very impacted by the PFAS problem. So we've tried to work on that in a number of different ways, and this would just be in relation to the project and all of um, the construction needed for that. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Senator Mitchell. You know, I, I saw a um, uh, a clip on a, a news show showing a, um, a a small facility, like a trailer, located that got located on um, a landfill where there the leachate and and the, everything gets to be. Um, uh, liquid, mm -hmm. and they were running the liquid, and was filled with PFAS, and they were running the liquid through this system in the truck that then um, removed the PFAS and then sent on the, um, the rest of the slurry or whatever they call it um, into the uh, sewer system um, PFAS free. And I thought that was extremely um, uh, clever and um, uh, and uh, and innovative. And I hope that 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 and, and small. We know it's small. <laughs> well, it was one landfill and one truck. Um, but there are any number of ways in which we can address the PFAS um, issues. They don't go away, as you know. And um, it, uh, uh, and certainly with uh, Woodbury and its uh, closeness to uh, 3M um, plant out, out there it, or uh, uh, operations uh, nearby, it's a, it's a very special issue for us, some of our committees more than others. But you have um, a uh, city council member here uh, with us today. Um, if you would uh, identify yourself for the record, we're pleased to have your testimony. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of committee for allowing the city of Woodbury to come before you, you today. To. My name is Andrea Date, okay. and I serve as mayor pro tem for the city of Woodbury. I'd like to begin by thanking Senator Nicole Mitchell for her support for leadership to assist the city on this issue. Um, the city of Woodbury has been focused on issues related to water for over a decade. Water conservation and protecting this precious natural resource has long been a top priority for the city. We have taken actions to protect water quality um, by implementing several practices, including a tiered water rate structure, restrictive lawn watering policy, irrigation and efficiency incentive programs, which save 143 million gallons of water annually, um, which decreases our need for additional water towers and treatment, but still the need is there. Water quantity remains one of our priorities, but water quality has emerged as a top issue in Woodbury due to the discovery of PFAS in our water. The city of Woodbury has taken proactive steps to address this issue by building several temporary water treatment facilities to continue to deliver the highest quality water possible to our residents and businesses. In the meantime, we are currently in the design phase of constructing a long-term PFAS treatment solution with the completion of a permanent water treatment plant, which is slated to start construction next year. While the 3M settlement fund will cover a good portion of the construction costs of the plant, the city is still facing a significant funding gap of up to $40 million to complete the project. The city is doing everything we can to reduce the burden placed on our re residents by this situation brought on by an outside entity. Eliminating the sales tax on city funded materials, supplies, and equipment used in the construction of our water treatment plant would be a step in that direction. On behalf of the city of Woodbury, I humbly ask you to pass SF354H. 4.8, which provides a refundable exemption for construction materials for a water treatment plant. We are aware that this type of request has been granted for many public facilities and would appreciate your support for Woodbury as well. Um, you should have an infographic in your project materials, and I would like to again thank you, Madam Chair, and for your um, 
consideration of this bill and for your additional um, comments and suggestions about PFAS. Are there any um, comments or questions for Senator um, uh, Senator Mitchell or Mayor Pro Tem Date? Seeing none, um, Senator Mitchell, thank you very much for being here this morning, um, and uh, uh, Council Member Mayor Pro Tem uh, Date. Thank you. Um, members, um, earlier um, uh, there was um, a response to a question asked by Senator Weber um, that needs uh, clarification and correction. Um, um, Ms. Pollock. Madam, <coughs> Madam Chair and members, um, yes, Senator Weber asked uh, if, if it was uh, common or if we had ever done before um, authorizing uh, sales tax exemptions for construction projects, um, the, the construction for which would go out of the, um, the budget planning window. Uh, and I answered that um, I thought we had done those in the past and would, and would check back. Um, Mr. Mum corrected me uh, that we have not done that in the past. The, the, um, the local government construction materials sales tax exemptions that we have enacted were all within the budget window. Um, that's not to say that they perhaps were presented to the committee with uh, a revenue reduction outside of the budget window, but as enacted, Senator Weber, uh, you're correct, that they, um, the projects were all um, budgeted within the forecast window. Um, thank you, Ms. Pollack. I'd also um, uh, just like to make a couple of general comments about uh, two areas, um, sales tax exemptions, uh, well, I guess three, uh, sales tax uh, impositions for local governments and then on uh, tax increment financing. Um, we are still working on the draft, uh, of, and I'll do the second one first, uh, still working on a draft response in legislation f um, based on the um, report that we received uh, last month on um, from the uh, Sales Tax Advisory uh, Task Force. Um, that will, because we're currently under a moratorium uh, for two years through next year on um, uh, allowing communities to submit proposals to impose a local sales tax. Meanwhile, of course, some of those that were authorized last year, they had this two-year window to go to a referendum, and unlike Beltrami County, they didn't rush it, <laughs> uh, and because they, uh, general law would not have um, uh, prevailed, and they have to, um, those cities have to have their referendum question on the ballot during a general election. So there are any number of them, of those proposals, that at the, um, uh, at the city's discretion, those cities that received um, favorable treatment from the legislature, um, <clears throat> we are likely to see them on the uh, 2024 uh, ballot. Um, <clears throat> they, are not, um, they are not affected by the moratorium since they were passed as part of the understanding uh, for allowing so many to go um, to go forward, the one of the biggest recommendations from the uh, uh, local uh, sales tax advisory group, and we will hear that report at the same time that we hear. Then, following that, the the um, uh, uh, the bill which uh, Representative Gomez and I will be the chief authors in our respective bodies. Um, but one of, one of the, probably, the, and I hope you'll get, get ready to be thinking about this, the primary recommendations that will be um, present in the bill is to eliminate the step period of um, either before or after a resolution um, of uh, local governments having to come to the legislature to um, uh, to put a question before their their um, their voters to um, provide for a uh, 
a local sales tax. Um, the task force recommended any number of, um, of guardrails that, um, uh, that we would, um, uh, that would be part of the legislation to um, really assure um, constituents in, in, any, uh, in any jurisdiction um, that any number of steps had been taken by the local government uh, before they take the step of putting the question um, on the ballot. So I hope we'll be ready for that, um, for that discussion and if that takes, if, if we get that through um, with guardrails, and there may be additional ones um, <clears throat> that, is, uh, uh, that we deem um, appropriate, um, that would um, uh, that would put us in a position of um, also being able to cancel the referendum. I mean, cancel the moratorium. But we'll we'll see how that um, how that works out. Um, we received the the governor governor's uh, supplemental budget for his wants. Uh, and programs um, was very pleased to see the one, the provision dealing with the uh, child tax care, a child tax credit, <clears throat> with re with regard to implementing the pilot program that would allow for um, metered payments out like like the federal tax credit had, child tax credit had, and that has was previously used in, by the federal government on, um, uh, on another program, and that is the Earned Income Tax Credit, um, on which um, our working family credit previously was, was based. Um, we um, um, will be taking a look at that also in the jurisdiction of this committee. Um, uh, we saw a um, provision for uh, emergency uh, medical services. Um, Senator House Child is not here, but that is uh, his bill. We'll take a very serious look at that and um, trying to find ways to um, increase that, um, that local government aid for one year for that, specific, for that specific purpose. I would point out that the child tax credit pilot program um, is not also an on. It's not. Um, it's not a tail in the sense that it's going to cost that much money every single year just to get, but just to get it, um, uh, to get it um, uh, going uh, next year. The um, uh, we are at. We have a lot of sales tax exemption proposals. Some of them. Um, uh, are a whole lot more money than others. Senator Weber and I are going to be uh, together uh, working out a uh, proposal on that, uh, on, the, on these sales tax exemptions, looking at a number of issues that I uh, hesitate to say in a priority order, but it's going to mean something if um, a city has received or is applying for help for their project in the bonding bill. It's going to mean something if the um, if the project is um, on its way. It's um, not only uh, shovel ready. It it is maybe even be um, be almost completed, which is why I think some of the proposals that we get are asking for refundable credit ahead of now because the project has been built. So they're kind of, it's kind of a retroactive um, uh, uh, approach. And, and then also um, uh, the cost. If, if, we don't make, um, if we don't make decisions um, on some sort of, um, this is more important than that is, and that we regard with respect the request from all of the jurisdictions, um, 
we're li not likely to have um, uh, enough of a tax expenditure part of our, our budget, even though they're one time, um, to, uh, to grant all of them. So we will, uh, we're going to be looking at ways in which we can um, scale some of the uh, requests, um, maybe give a percentage uh, for everybody, maybe fund the little ones, um, all of them, and then, and then keep them in different categories. We're going to try to be as fair about it as we can um, we'll, with being um, responsive to uh, the needs. And they certainly, um, uh, they certainly are requests that um, are spread across the state and, and, um, and with um, members uh, who are um, in either party. So um, it's, um, um, in that regard, it makes it easy <laughs> uh, so that we can, um, uh, if there are 30 proposals and 15 are GOP members and 15 are, are uh, DFL, then we have to look for another way of uh, cutting the cake and not just, um, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna work on being, uh, being fair and creative, and if you have any suggestions about that, um, what should be what should be a priority consideration? Um, please uh, let um, Senator Weber um, or me know. Um, the third topic is tax increment financing. We are um, unlikely to hear anything other than uh, special legislation. We are not going to undertake this year. On general changes, general law changes to the TIF statutes. There are some before us in legislation, but we are not going to be taking those up. We're going to concentrate on the um, special legislation, and I believe, um, um, Mr. Sylvia, how many proposals do we have in so far? Madam Chair, I, I believe we're probably close to 15 at this point. Yeah, 15, and how many of those are special legislation? Uh, Madam Chair, I believe maybe two or three of those are. So the majority are special legislation. Um, two or three are general. Sorry. Yes. And so we're going to concentrate on on the uh, what is uh, coming up in the in those special um, in those special uh, uh, legislation. By the way, why, on the on the local sales tax advisory force uh, uh, task force, um, I I hope that we can have a good, uh, solid, supported bill um, as, a, um, as a result of their work uh, and, and, passed, and passed the legislation um, after we've considered it and everything, um, and that we do not have, in 2025, bills that come in um, about local sales taxes that say, notwithstanding all of the work <laughs> that the local sales tax advisory task force did in giving cities and others um, autonomy in making those decisions, we want an exception to the law. So I hope that that, that bill that, that is part of the omnibus bill is um, widely supported enough that um, that we don't see those bills coming forward. They probably will not be well received. Um, so um, any questions about kind of what's, uh, what's next up for us? We do have more sales tax bills, and we, um, I think we could have done them all today. They went so fast. But, but um, here we are. And. Um, uh, any other questions about uh, our schedule going uh, going um, forward here? Comments or complaints? Okay, then. Thank you very much for your attendance today, and we stand adjourned.